the way these things are broken down is um, in types. So we, we, we have three basic types that we're concerned with. Uh, if you do some searching on the internet, you'll find probably six different types of slowly changing dimensions. But really, there's three of them that are most common. Um, type 1, type 2, type 3. So uh, very quickly, um, type 1 slowly changing dimensions are uh, ones that we don't really track the changes. So when a uh, when 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 a part of that dimension data is changing, we just keep the the very last record of it, and we kind of ignore what came before. So uh, the second type is type two, and in type two, we are keeping a running history of when a change was made, uh, so that we can tell what the current value is, what the historical values were, and when what were the basically the effective dates of the uh, previous values. A type three change is a little bit uh, like a type 2 except in, instead of having an, an infinite history that we're keeping um, we actually define columns within that dimension to track just a discrete number of different changes so very common would be this year last year um, uh, type 3 is probably a less common that you're going to use uh, type 2 if you're if you're managing slowly changing dimensions type 2 are probably the most common so we'll spend uh, most of the time on those on 1 and 2 um, and what I've done here is prepared for you um, three different dimension tables that are storing the same thing. So this, these are customers, um, uh, George Washington, John Adams, which are customers you might recognize. And uh, what, what we have in these dimension tables is essentially um, what their hometown was before they became president and what their hometown was when they were president, or at least where they lived when they were president. And in the type 2, this one is probably the easiest to really recognize what's going on because we have George Washington who lived in uh, Mount Vernon, Virginia from 1732 until um, the uh, just before he was inaugurated into office on April 30th. And um, we're actually back in history right now, so he's, he's still president according to our data. Um, John Adams is, uh, was started living in uh, Massachusetts in 1735 he's he's still there so there's there's been no change but we're really going to look at George Washington so we can see this change was tracked our dimension table actually has two customer records for George Washington and this is what you're going to see in a type 2 slowly changing dimension you've got two different records contrast that to the type 1 dimension table we only have one record for George and one record for John and we can see that the city is Washington. We have no record that he ever lived in Virginia. This is a type 1 dimension. And then in the type 3, we have both the Washington or the, the Washington DC and the Virginia uh, locations, but they're on the same row instead of being in two different rows. So you kind of I'll show you in a minute what, what difference that makes. So that's what the dimension tables look like. Um, and what I'm going to kind of just show you, I have the exact same sales history for these customers in all three types of dimensions. So you wouldn't normally have three different dimension tables like this. You'd, you'd pick one depending on the model you needed. But I did it three ways so you could see uh, how they contrast. So in the first case, we have um, only uh, the Washington, D.C. Um, city for George. And we have two sales records. One is in when he lived in Virginia. We sold $100 to him, and when he was in Washington, D.C., we sold $100 to him. And you'll see in a minute what effect this has that we don't know that he used to live in Virginia. In the Type 2 scenario, um, it looks just like this. You see the sales is exactly the same, and you can see that, that we have the history of where he used to live. And then number three um, is like the Type 1, except there are extra fields in the end that tell us what it was last year. Well, the sales history is the same every every way everywhere down the road. So I'm going to uh, uh, take this and uh, give us a little more space to breathe here, so we can see better. All right. So here are a set of queries. Here I'm going to look at uh, the sales by the customer name um, with a type one dimension. And actually, I'll do both of these at the same time type 1 and type 2 and you notice these these queries are exactly the same so the the dimension the type 2 dimension had no effect on showing us the sales in 1789 for um, the, this customer George Washington there was because there was no change in uh, his name it had no effect on the result but what you'll see is when he moved from city to city there's a big difference in the type 1 and type 2 and in the type 1 all of the sales uh, 
even when he lived in Mount Vernon, get lumped into Washington, D.C. So this could be misleading um, if it was important for us to know that uh, we had a certain number of sales for customers that lived in Mount Vernon when the sale was made and a, and a different sales in Washington when the customer lived in Washington. With a type 1 dimension, we wouldn't be able to tell that. With type 2, we can. We can tell that um, that sale was in Mount Vernon and that sale was in Washington and they're, they're kept separate. And a really interesting thing when you're using type 2s is that um, you will actually get um, an interesting effect. So here is querying the same exact fact table, fact sales 2, fact sales 2, and in the first query Washington, the name of the person is $200 in sales, but at the, because of the way the type 2 works, those sales can be split down by city when they need to be. So it's a very flexible kind of a, a storage. And then finally, just taking a look at the type 3, and the type 3 is uh, is, is storing data on columns so we can see the last year. So this is with a type 3 dimension if we wanted to see what were the sales in Washington this year, 1789, uh, $200. Um, but this, this kind of dimension also we can ask a question like, well what were, what, what, if, if it were last year, where would that $200 sales have been and that would have been in Mount Vernon. So the type 3 really, this is a really handy kind of a construct if we're doing things like um, what the, the is was kind of questions. So if if we, if we were to have left our sales territories the same that they were last year, then what would the sales have been by territory if we'd made no changes? And that's the kind of model that um, you're really listening for for a, uh, a type 3. Type 2 doesn't solve that quite so well because type 2 is really looking at what it is over time or you know what what it has been over time whereas the type 3 gives you a little bit more of that scenario driven kind of a thing. The downside to, to type 3 though is that every time you, you develop a new scenario or you know something you want to look at you're adding columns to your tables so there's there's some upside there's some downside um, and again type 1 probably the very most common because with so many calculator so many calculations you you may not care um, that the value is changing like the spelling of something. Type 2 is probably the, the, the most common thing you're going to use if you're tracking changes.